what everyone as a whole has seen is the players are more athletic, they're working harder off court, and they see the prize. And the prize is making this a legitimate career as a pro pickleball player, and that's really exciting. Welcome back to the future of pickleball. We have a good guest today. We've got good. A... I'm a good guest. Okay. Well, great. you could be a great guest if you let the announcer speak. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do, this gentleman is Dave Fleming. Dave Fleming is an instrumental part of the sport of pickleball. Uh, he's got a really interesting background that brought him to case. He may be a bit of a smart aleck in the course of this thing, and you'll see why. But what we want to do is, is David's been very deep in the professional game from the onset of it. He is an elite level player, uh, but deeply, deeply involved in the program, and he's very involved in the announcer broadcaster side of the sport of pickleball. David, welcome. Thrilled to be here, Paul. So thanks for having me, brother. Oh, good. You bet. One of the things that I, I found really interesting that the, when I met you and started hearing about you and your past, Talk a little bit about what, what you've done in, in corporate America and the comedy you do. It's really, that's interesting stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, my background's straight uh, Fortune 500 marketing. So I helped run the marketing for big brands like Dr. Pepper, Snapple, Mott's, and Pizza Hut. So if you've eaten all that pizza, you have to have something to wash it down <laughs> with. So uh, I, uh, I've done the food and the liquid, all the healthier stuff, uh, obviously. And uh, at every one of my jobs, I was always like, hey, we have to do a big bottler meeting. Dave, go do something and do a big presentation or whatever. And I was like, I need to get paid to be funny. I mean, in, in jobs, they've asked me to be Santa. I'm 5'8", 160, and I got to be freaking Santa. So, um, so. I literally wrote down everything I thought was funny in the office. I'd, I'd literally be taking notes for the meeting and then in the side, like a piece of paper just like you have there, I'd write down what's funny about the break room, what's funny about a conference call, what's funny about email. And then I went to open mic nights at comedy clubs with office humor and I wasn't in the comedy sector at all. So there'd be 43 comics, I'd go 42nd. There'd be two people in the audience, two. Two other comics who could care less about me. And I was a solid 2-0 comedian when I started. <laughs> I mean, I was terrible. I didn't know where to look. I, you know, The whole purpose is to make people laugh. I'd talk right through a laugh. I had no idea what I was doing, and it's no different than pickleball, quite frankly. You're out there alone, you have to work on it. You have to practice. So I practiced and practiced, and I went and took my lumps, literally, in, with the comedy, and then they sort of liked me because I brought a different thing instead of just the typical comedian, what's going on in my life, relationships, all that. I was doing all the corporate stuff, brought a corporate audience down there, and then I'd get Friday and Saturday night opportunities, and then I decided I just want to do my own thing. So I wrote a show called Man vs. Office, which is 80 minutes of all of that stuff. If you've worked in an office, you can relate to it, and I've probably oh, done that. Nice a hundred times uh, once on Broadway, which was really fun. And it's just been a, uh, marketing and comedy are so similar because you're looking for insights about life and about how people, you know, why do they want pizza? Why do they drink certain drinks? And what's freaking funny? So you have to dig into that. And I've been, you know, I've really enjoyed the fact that I could take my background and then go on stage there's nothing bigger than getting a huge crowd of people laughing at what you're doing it's the biggest rush ever and i'm i'm thrilled to have had that be part of my life so then obviously that was a big component that set the stage for you to be comfortable behind the microphone at a tournament with all of your background then as a player and instructor and coach it all just fit together yeah so i was i was fortunate to get the opportunity and i think you know oftentimes in life we just need that one opportunity so i got the opportunity and then i had an opinion on what i thought broadcasters should do sure. on on pickleball specifically and um i have that background so i want to 
inform. I want to help people understand what they're watching. And I think there is a role for the right amount of entertainment. And I, you know, I work very hard on my vocabulary. So you're going to hear me say things like shankopotamus. What does that mean? But I want, I want that. I, I, I like to play with different word combinations. But I really like to teach within that, too, so that when you watch a broadcast that I am a part of, I want it to be stand next to the the major sports that people watch and you know there's a lot of work that goes on when the camera's not rolling so that we are well prepared to deliver what I think is a ever improving broadcast and I'm going to you know sprinkle in we are all made of our experiences yep. and I am going to always sprinkle in all the things that uh, have touched me in my life into the broadcast and you know I've, I've, I appreciate the the kind words I've received from many, and I'll uh, keep working hard to get anyone that wants something different going. But I, I'm, I'm, I work really hard at it. Well, and, and you, you have been the right man at the right time. We're in this emerging sport. We've got lots and lots of people coming into the sport who don't have a high IQ of pickleball yet, but they're interested and engaged. You're pretty good at keeping them engaged and helping them become part of the community. Yeah, I think it's really important as we are on national television. If we're on Fox, we were on Fox a couple uh, weeks ago. Somebody might be flipping channels literally and see, oh, I've heard my neighbor, Eric. Sure. Eric has been talking about pickleball. Everybody's freaking talking about <laughs> pickleball, but especially Eric. So they stop. I want to make darn sure that if they stop on pickleball on any of the channels, tennis channel, wherever we, we have it, that they get engaged as soon as they stop there and then you know who knows where that goes and they go buy a Selkirk paddle and get out on the out get out on the court and yep. start playing so that's yes I, you know I so I don't take that lightly because I, I I recognize that's a really important role that I play for our tour for the Carvana PPA tour as well as for everybody that's part of it I want this to continue to grow it's growing like gangbusters but I, de I definitely it's it is a privilege to have that seat and I don't take it lightly cool well it, I tell you I do want to talk in in depth a little bit about sort of this short history of the pro game and and you've been a, a hallmark in the of, as a player in the game before the pro tour started so you were really in a position to to, to be involved, and I'm guessing that's probably how you first got involved at the at the pro end of things. But but let's just take a minute and talk for for a, a bit about how the sport has to kind of where it's at today, how it's come along, where it's at. Because then I want to kind of lead into kind of what your thoughts might be and where this might be going. What's what might the viewers see coming down sure. the road? Yeah, I think the big difference uh, now is the. Three, probably four years ago, there were a couple of tournaments that were on TV. There were lots of people holding an iPhone up and people were watching somebody talking behind their iPhone. And yay, somebody is actually showing us some pickleball. Yeah. That's what we had. Yep. We didn't know any different. And I think the rapid change now to where... As I mentioned, we've been on many national broadcasts. We have a consistent spot on Tennis Channel throughout 2023 with the, the tour. That's a huge step change. And, and everybody wants us to go really fast, but that is a really fast timeline already. So what have I seen? Number one, there's more money in it. So the people are looking at, okay, I'm kind of a really good tennis player, but I don't know if I can make it. So maybe this is an opportunity sure. for me. And for all of the higher level pros, they are seeing that maybe pro pickleball player is a legit career. There are pro pickleball players that have to grind like crazy with clinics and lessons and all of that to be able to make a living and support their family. I think you'll find more and more as we progress that all that off the court grinding will be necessary certainly for some, but for the top, we'll see how many. They'll be able to play like the top tennis players are and you have a freaking good life as a, as a pro pickleball player because sponsorships are there, 
I don't know anyone that's quit pickleball, Paul. Nobody so, quits. So if you are tied to pickleball in some way and you become the face of it, people are going to want to be associated with you. Brands like I've worked with are going to want to be associated with you. So that's a huge change and a big opportunity going forward. And then just the level of play, Paul, is outrageously different. Um, the winners of 2019 were playing a slower, softer, you know, game, and now everyone is is ramping it up. Like, you know, I'm fortunate to play high-level senior champions, as we like to be called now. Us grumpy old seniors <laughs> want to be champions. So, you know, even that level, you attacks are more. But uh, I. I know that the three year ago, me, even though I'm three years older, would get destroyed by me. And I think most players would agree that sure. because they've added shots, the paddle technology is better, and we can talk about that. But I think what everyone as a whole has seen is the players are more athletic, they're working harder off court, and they see the prize. And the prize is making this a legitimate career as a pro pickleball player, and that's really exciting. Well, and on that note, we're here at the at the MLP. Um, we're in Mesa, Arizona, 2023. We've now had some truly high-profile, legit, world-class tennis players now come into the game. They're not blowing the world up just yet. And some of us are kind of, I, I don't wish them anything negatively, yeah. but I think it speaks well to our sport is a unique sport with a unique skill set do you think I'm right in that? Does that play? Well, I think the reality is, is if I have played tennis at a high level, my floor of where I'm starting from is higher than someone that hasn't. Absolutely. So that that is what you bring. And tennis players certainly have the opportunity to take things from their tennis game and bring them to the court. The difference in what you're referring to is what I love to say, what a, a lot of people like to say with pickleball is it's chess, not checkers. And if you don't know how to play the chess part of it, I don't care how good your two-handed <laughs> backhand was on a tennis court or whatever, yeah. these high-level players that are playing in the premier part of Major League Pickleball that you mentioned are going to beat those tennis players. Now, what I will say is two things. Number one, that number 100 to 150 and beyond tennis player that goes – hey, what's going on with pickleball over yeah. here? Maybe if I really just dedicate everything to that and it is a career that can make a decent living and everyone needs to define what that means to them, I think you will see more and more of that. So that's number one. Number two, and what's really exciting, and this, you know, this is the, the future, ta-da, of pickleball, how fun is it going to be, Paul, when we don't say they bring tennis to pickleball, they've been playing only pickleball since they were eight. They've just played pickleball, so they don't have a tennis shot. They're perfecting their pickleball because that's what they did. It's going to be in college. It's, it eventually will be in high school. It's just, again, timelines, we'll see. But that's going to be really fun. Not that I, I, I've played tennis since I was five, so I'm, I, I hate when tennis is a foil for pickleball. That's not where things should be at all. They can harmoniously live exist, together. Sure. But it's really cool, and Anna Lee has inspired a lot of kids to just pick up a pickleball paddle, like the one right here, and they are gonna be crazy. Because if you, you know, a lot of people, the, high, the best athletes start at a young age and, and keep refining that. And we're gonna have six, seven, eight-year-olds today in 2023 that five, six, ten years from now are going to be wrecking people, and they've only used to paddle, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, very fun, very fun. The, uh, the, uh, the events that you're at, so you do the PPA and the MLP. Uh, the future now, I think the, the PPA has announced a very, very vibrant schedule through the whole of 2023. Yeah. What would you express to people to encourage them to get out and see these things as opposed to what they see in the streaming services or on Fox or on uh, uh, the tennis channel? What would your vision there be? I think it's like any, any sport. Um, to see how good these athletes are and to see the pace and the spin, the tour, as you mentioned, is going all over the country. So 
we're going to get close to you. We may not be in your backyard, but we're going to get close to you. And if you have an interest in the sport at all, and you haven't seen a Ben Johns play, and you haven't seen a Jay Davillier, and you haven't seen a Tyson McGuffin barking and all of the things that, that he does, it's just different. Like hockey, I'm a big fan of hockey. When you go to a hockey game live, it's just different. You can see the pace. You can see the skating. Our sport is no different than that. How hard they're hitting the ball at ridiculous angles and the spin that they can, can generate. And it's just freaking fun, Paul. Yes, so that's sir. the other part of it. And I think what's fun today, and I don't know how long this is going to last. It'll be several years, is wherever your game is on the spectrum is you can play on the court two down from the best players in the world. And I love, I love that part of our sport and, and, and that camaraderie, that family, that festival-like atmosphere that we want to have where I can go play and then two courts over, oh my gosh, look at that, there's Callie Smith playing. I mean, how fun is that? So I think that's really great. So if you like, if you like the sport at all, check Check ppatour.com and see if we're coming near you. And, you know, and then watch them before, and then you can figure out, you know, I want, I want to get to the point where people are damaged if their favorite player didn't win. I'm a huge Steeler fan. That's well documented. Yeah. The Steelers lose. I am physically damaged. <laughs> I had nothing to do with the outcome. I, I always feel like I did. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited as we progress and these players build their own brands that people will really, really, like they wanted Fed or Nadal or Djokovic or whoever their favorite tennis player, Serena Williams, I want them to want that player to win and live and die with that, and I think we'll get there. Yeah, it's been interesting. I've been, I've been able to be at four of the MLP events since it started a little over a year ago, and and sometimes the energy in the stands is just getting insane. I mean, it's insane in a good way. It's yeah. fun. It's exciting. People are invested in this. And that, that team player environment, it, it appears to me that the players really buy into the team environment. Yeah, I think what, uh, what's great for 2023 is we've got all the players playing. So, you know, today... You know what, for people who don't know, just kind of expand on what all the players playing means. Yeah, that might be helpful. That's, that's a, a great... Um, clarification. So last year there was a lot of uh, turmoil in the in the pro game with players playing in one tour or the other. Um, the top players did not play Major League Pickleball last year and this year a lot of detente, a lot of uh, okay let's let's get this figured out it's for the best of the sport. So the top 60 players basically are playing a huge schedule on the PPA, and then those same players are making up the teams that are at Major League Pickleball, and that's fun. So, you know, literally today you have Ben Johns playing with not his brother, his brother's on another team, Colin Johns, and you have all of these mixed up partners, and I think the amount of that is what everything just needs to keep an eye on. Like how many of those keep that energy and enthusiasm because it is an individual sport and then MLP is an amazing team thing that really takes that, you know, a lot of these guys played college tennis. Uh, they love having their teammates standing there cheering them on right yeah. there. So. You've got the Carvana PPA tour where you're playing for yourself or your partner. And then every so often, six times a year this year with Major League Pickleball, you'll have that team environment. And I think the fact that those things are together, working together, and the fact that uh, all the best players are in there really makes it special. So this is a big year. You know, one of the things that I, I, I've been very deep in the sport, I'm involved with a lot of aspects of it. One of the things that seems to me, and I'd be interested in your opinion, is that part of the attraction of the MLP is the fact that some of the perennial partnerships that many of us have seen many, many, many times are split up and it really adds a new twist or a new dynamic to things. Do you think that's right? 100%. I think the, you know, today Ben Johns is playing with Tyler Lung, not older brother Colin Johns. And, uh, that's different and how's that going and uh, I think you know last year on the PPA tour we had a couple of events where we mixed up the partners and I think doing that and then obviously with the official teams and so forth just it 
you see a different thing and those players have to adjust. You know, I always wonder how much of the goods are they going to give away to somebody that next week they're going to have to <laughs> have to beat. Like, am I giving you 50% of what I know or am I giving you all of it? And I think, honestly, that varies across the board, sure. player to sure. player. So, but without question, it's fun to see different matchups out there. And it's fun to see them battling for each other to try and win a championship. And that's cool. Cool. Uh, I would like to segue, if you wouldn't mind, into the broadcast, the digital, the production side of what you've seen, and I know you're very much on the inside of what is happening, what is going to happen. Yeah. Um, expand on that a little. Well, I think the big thing is just the quality is getting way better. You know, now we've got a major network uh, that's, you know, in millions and millions of homes with the Tennis Channel, with a state-of-the-art studio in California, which is where this is produced from working on our sport. So you want to talk about step change. That's how you start yeah. to make this different. And I think, the, I think the big difference there is now you have people that have produced TV looking at different ways to take our sport to the hardcore fan, the casual fan, the person that plays, and then literally somebody that's like, as I mentioned before, Eric's my neighbor, I don't know anything about this pickleball, and I've arrived, how do I keep them? Um, so I think that's, you know, that's just going to keep getting better. And it's all the things. I mean, uh, we've had net cam now, so you can see that kitchen right, right up close with the little cameras put on that. And I think that's going to continue to evolve. The sound continues to evolve. Our sport is definitely known for its sound, and the sound is important. It's important to the players. It's fun for the fans. And the sound just doesn't mean the ball off the paddle, but the, the players, the energy, sure. the crowd roaring when somebody hits an amazing shot. So I think all of that, the capturing that energy is only better when you have TV experts at the helm and that's we're going to have more and more of that i think the at tournament experience is getting better and better as far as center court looking legit we've got video boards out there now it just it looks the part if you go to the last ppa event that we had in mission hills i mean mission hills country club what a place to have an event you go on center court that thing looks like it's as good as any pro sport when you roll into that so I think the, the big thing with the broadcasting is there's going to continue to be how do we continue to up the ante from that. And then the big thing that we all have to do collectively is tell the stories of the players. And uh, I want to be working really hard on that because I want people to know these players. I want to do my part in telling their stories and then have partners like Selkirk and many others continue to do that because we are a sport of human beings and I want those human beings to be beloved by the people that can connect with them. But if they don't know what to, Callie's a mom, I connect with that. You know, Tyson McGuffin has kids in his podcast and he's the most electrifying man in pickleball. That guy's cool. I want to, I want to learn more about kind this Kind of guy. fun having pregnant ladies still playing we, on the tour, isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, uh, we have these women, I mean, Corinne Carr's out here playing right now and it's due in April and she's playing fantastic pickleball. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all of the things off the court that people can relate to. And uh, we as a collective have the responsibility to continue to do a great job in telling those stories and we haven't even scratched the surface as far as I'm concerned. Now on the stories, one of the things, I don't know whether you can shed light on this, but I'm hearing rumors that there are a couple of different documentaries or <laughs> documentary themes. Any insight on I that? I think uh, other than that's true okay. and people are working on that. So I think obviously, like I never watched an F1 race in my life and then I get Drive to Survive put in my lap and I'm obsessed. Yeah. So um, I... You and four other million of oh, the rest yeah, of us. I yes. know. And I still haven't, I don't think I've watched an F1 race start to finish since then, but the minute the minute that comes out, we're ordering two pizzas, we're going to have Dr. <laughs> Pepper lined up, and we're going to binge the, you know what, out of that when that comes out uh, next, this later this year. Obviously, Breakpoint just came out from the, it's the tennis version of that, which is, which is interesting, and... Uh, you know, so I don't know the angles that the various documentaries are going to do, but what that can tell all of us is that filmmakers and people that uh, create content for a living 
have seen this explosion of our sport and want to dig deeper into it. And I think that's great. Cool. I've really appreciated this. Before we, before we wrap this up, I do want to ask you, is there anything in your mind, your soul, about things coming, thinking out maybe three years, five years, is there any vision or fantasy that you might have of what you'd like to see happen in pickleball? Well, one thing that's happening sooner than that that's going to change a lot is gambling. So that, you know, we'll see when that comes to the court, but that is going to put a lot of new eyeballs on the sport is going to change a lot of things about our sport and is going to expand an already growing uh, world of pickleball into a lot of casual people that uh, enjoy putting a little action on on a sport sure. and you know those that awareness for both the players the tours and just putting pickleball in a lot of places where it isn't today is going to be a step change for this sport that will happen at some point in 2023. So that's not three to five years from now. Could we could we make a plan okay. to get back together when this stuff actually starts to come together where there's something specific to talk about? You'd be available? Paul, I'm always available for you, brother. All right. uh, so yeah, and then, you know, farther down the road, obviously, I think all of us want to see more and you know you have to earn the right so you know the fact that we have had national networks and hundreds of thousands of people tuning into those is is great so how do we continue to earn the right by the product we put out there by the the players sure. by the entertainment value that it, it does i mean everyone's busy this is you know what's the latest instagram post or TikTok video that's quick so we have to maintain the right but you know if you're going to ask me fantasy i want to say that you know we're playing in much bigger venues with many more people in them and and i want to get to the point where our top 20 players can't walk down the street without people asking for their autograph and i don't know when that date is where that is going to happen but i i don't see why that isn't realistic we all i am as i said very fortunate to be a steward of of this game from the position i have and you know it's a privilege for us to be that now we have to help collectively take that to the level and the, you know the players are doing their work i can tell you how hard they're working off court and then we are lucky to see it and i get to, and i'm lucky to talk about it when when it's happening so we are in a good spot now it's just a matter of keep building and building and not try and get too far ahead of ourselves till we're ready for some of this stuff but uh, i think it's it's going to be an exciting ride and i'm i'm thrilled to be on the ride cool I told you it was going to be a good meeting today, didn't I, guys? So this is what we're looking forward in the future of pickleball. One of the things that I find so exciting about what I'm doing in this podcast is the people that I get a chance to meet and talk to who are leading the charge. Hang on. The ride's going to be fun. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for having me, brother. You bet.